So we've got a brand new build here on the channel. It is a monster. It will be a fixture moving forward, but it's just kind of suddenly appeared as if out of nowhere. And that's not usually how these things go. Traditionally in the past on this channel, even on other channels, builds like this tend to take up three, four, five, six different videos and stretch out over the course of weeks or months or sometimes even longer than that. There'll be a process that starts with the introduction of hardware then something will go wrong in the middle or I'll forget a part or I'll have to reorder some fittings or replace the graphics card or the motherboard is wrong or whatever the case may be. And by the time we're done with that video process, it's almost kind of a relief as opposed to something to be super proud of. And this time I didn't want any of that. Now, of course, obviously there are some people who enjoy seeing the build process and seeing things come together because it is a teaching experience. But if you guys are interested in that, there is a lot of that content already, not only on YouTube, but just on my channel. And I'm sure that we'll be doing more of those videos in the future, but for this build, I just kind of wanted to get back to basics. I wanted to enjoy the process of putting something like this together without having to worry about getting all the funky camera angles and the explainers in the middle of it. And to be honest, as a result, things went much smoother and the result is something that I absolutely love. So there's no script for this video. I just wanted to introduce you guys to what's gonna be my new editing machine. When I did my 3950X build slash review video, I did mention that I had a 3960X, which is what we're using right now. And then I would be putting together a full custom loop for it and then using that machine moving forward because it is just a better chip for video editing, especially in Adobe Premiere, which is still strange for me to say considering Intel's dominance in that space for so long. But just let's run through the parts here, and then I have a few points that I wanted to touch on and uh, show you guys some pretty cool B-roll. So, like I said, this is an AMD Threadripper 3960X-based system. It's got a Galax Hall of Fame 2080 Ti. The motherboard is from Gigabyte. It's a TRX40 Aorus Master. There is 128 gigabytes, that's eight times 16 gig dims of G-Skill Trident Z Neo. Now, this memory is something that I had a little bit of a, I don't know, frustration with, because this the Neo series is supposed to be specifically made for uh, AMD Ryzen processors and motherboards, and supposed to have full compatibility or 99% compatibility with all those builds. I, I guess maybe I fall within the 1% because this is DDR4 3600 CL16, and it's not the 16, 18, 18, 39, or 38, whatever it is. This is the this is the more expensive version, the 16, 16, 16, 36. So I really had high hopes for this memory, and as it turns out, I cannot boot the system with it running at 3600 speed or faster. It just won't do it. Even just enabling the XMP profile for the simplest one-click overclock possible just doesn't work. The system does not boot. It will boot loop, and then it will re-enter the BIOS and reset everything. So what it's running at right now is 3466, and as a result, we have the Infinity Fabric running at 1733. It's a little disappointing, but to be honest, the performance difference between 3466 and 3600 is going to be not really noticeable at all. So I'm not that upset. I'm just more upset that it, it doesn't function like I assumed it would. And also there's one dim, which is the third from the right, that refuses to change color. And I think it's actually the motherboard, not necessarily the memory itself, because I took out all the memory and I replaced it all in different slots and it's still that same slot that is not functioning correctly. And this actually happened when I updated the BIOS. I actually had this set up with the color scheme that I wanted. As you, can, you guys can probably see, the colors in here are supposed to be white, black, and pink, as per the Nsource Customs cables. And that was kind of kind of play off the white accent of the graphics card, the white accents on the Noctua fans, and then the white accents uh, on the cabling. And what I was gonna do is alternate white and pink with the memory sticks. And I had it set up that way through the G-Skill software until I updated the BIOS of the motherboard to get the latest GSA version. And now I've completely bricked the RGB functionality of one of the dim slots. I tried reverting the BIOS, did not help. 
Uh, and I've tried all different kinds of RGB software. The RS control, the RGB Fusion software that's supposed to go with this motherboard doesn't even recognize those dims. It will not control them at all. Believe it or not, the uh, Asus Aura Sync software does see those dims, but it's same result as if I try the Asus Aura Sync or the G Skill Trident Z software, I cannot change the color of that third dim. It just stays on rainbow. So as a result, I've had to revert the system to being uh, rainbow effect on the memory dims and on the Fantex Neon RGB strips that I had installed in here as well. Again, it's a little frustrating because I had it set up the way I wanted it and then just doing something as simple as updating the BIOS just completely bricked all that functionality and I cannot get it back. So it kind of defeats the purpose of having these cables set up in that color scheme because I can't coordinate the rest of the build to look like that. It's not the end of the world, uh, but considering the amount of time and effort and money that went into a build like this, it is frustrating and I do wish that wasn't something that existed. Uh, the RGB software in general is just trash. Like most of it is just absolute garbage. And I posted a tweet about this and a lot of you guys seem to agree. Yes, there are certain ones that work better than others, but in the end, they're, they we need some kind of unification of RGB software to make these things work. And the fact that the Aura software doesn't even see the dims, I don't even know where to start with that. A couple of the gripes that I have that are really small that I probably won't even do anything about. The vertical GPU mount is from Fantex. It's a little wobbly. It's not that big of a deal because the GPU is, is not gonna move around. It's not like I'm moving the case around at all. But the I did actually have to brace it at the back with a couple of screws just to make sure that it wasn't sagging, which is a little disappointing, but I got it set up now so that shouldn't be that big of an issue. I was thinking about swapping GPU out for my Zotac Amp Extreme because considering that this is no longer a white accented build, it's rainbow accented, the Amp Extreme actually has some pretty significant RGB accents on the front that might look better. I may or may not do that. To be honest, I just really like this Hall of Fame card and I kind of want to use that. I do want to say though, thank you very much to Fantex for providing all the water cooling gear in here, at least the block and the fittings, uh, which obviously is an enormous expense. So thank you very much to them for sending it over. I did combo uh, these parts with some EK parts. So we've got the EK distro block in the back and we've got EK radiators. So. Everything in here is pretty much color matched the way I wanted to, uh, especially with the matte black uh, brass tubing that I used. And the way I did that was that cutting metal tubes is obviously a little more difficult than PETG. Uh, so what I did was I set the loop up with PETG first, and then I just cut the brass tubing to these lengths and then swapped it in. Uh, in place of these and I label these tubes just to kind of remind myself where these were going uh, so that when I cut the brass tubing I knew exactly where to place them. It ended up working out really well and I really do like the look of the black brass tubing. You can't see the coolant running through the system which is a little unfortunate but you see a lot of it in the distro block so I'm not that pressed. Uh, you also see it in the clear CPU block so I think the, the black brass it creates a really industrial look, especially with these chunky angled Fantex fittings that I really, really like. And the Noctua fans that I used here not only are super quiet, but they also play into that look with just the completely black housing. I did use the white accents, they're, they're white corner pieces, the Chromax accents to kind of tie into the white, the, like the white, um, I don't know, highlights. So it's not entirely black and entirely industrial, but I think the, the look still just really works. So thank you once again to Fantex for providing that stuff. Thank you very much to Ensourced who sent over these awesome looking cables uh, and couldn't be happier with those. If I do end up swapping to the Zotac card, I will need a two by eight pin PCIe uh, extension instead of the three by eight, which the Hall of Fame card uses, but we'll worry about that at a later time. I also want to thank Seagate who provided the mass storage that we're using in the back here through these hot swap drives. There are three Seagate 14 terabyte Iron Wolf hard drives that can provide a massive amount of storage. Right now I use a 20 terabyte external array from Western Digital. It is not only almost full, but it also disconnects randomly. And when that happens, the fans just spin up and go nuts. 
So I'm gonna transfer everything over. I'm more than doubling my storage capacity and I shouldn't have to worry about uh, a big brick on my desk and occasional just fan ramping out of nowhere. As far as how I have these systems set up uh, for daily use, I did try some overclocking uh, with just how it is set up right now with the two 360 millimeter radiators just for the CPU. I was able to run very stable at 4.4 gigahertz at 1.4 volts. The temps got a little higher than I wanted with a full custom loop. And to be honest, the performance difference for daily use is gonna be almost nil. So after clocking it up to 4.4 and seeing that I could achieve that pretty easily, I just kind of reverted back to stock settings. And so the Threadripper 3960X is gonna rely on PBO to do its boosting for us. And the performance difference in Adobe Premiere is, is really minimal. So I'm not really worried about that. And then the temperatures are just much lower overall. I uh, was seeing operating temperatures, uh, idle temperatures around 30 degrees, and then uh, load temperatures around 60 degrees. So that seems to be uh, sufficient. I really don't have any complaints. With the overclock applied, we were hitting like 80 degrees under load, and that was a little too much. Like there's no reason to run that high for that minimal performance gain. I also did try some AC unit assisted overclocking where I plumbed it into the front of the case, let it cool the entire interior, and then exhausting the cool air out the top. So it would flow through this radiator and also the cool air would affect the GPU. I was able to get the GPU up to plus 125 on the core and plus 1300 on the memory. And the CPU only went a little higher, which was uh, 4.45 gigahertz at 1.425 volts. Uh, time spike stream score with that setup was 8341, which is 53rd in the world. And it's right behind what Linus was doing with uh, a uh, water blocked 2080 Ti and a 7980XE. So I'm super confident that if I actually had a custom loop on this card and or wasn't using a completely enclosed case that we could just blow by that number. Uh, if it was on an open air bench or something like that, we'd be using chilled water, we'd be way above that. So um, for a daily driver system, th those scores are just phenomenal. And I can't wait to use this on a daily basis. I think it's just gonna be an excellent, excellent upgrade over what I have been using the last couple of years, which is an Intel 7980XE. Uh, and then even an upgrade over what I just built, which is a 3950X, but it's gonna free up my 3950X to be used in other projects. So that is a benefit here. So that's it for this video, guys. I am super happy with the way this turned out. I'm not planning on naming it, but if you wanna drop some comments down below, uh, what, as far as what your name for this kind of build might be, I'd be more than happy to take a look at them. And uh, I can't wait to get this in my office and running on a daily basis because it's just fantastic. Thanks again to Fantex. Thank you to Ensource Customs. Thank you to Seagate. And um, thank you to you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Get subscribed if you're not already. And I will see you next time.